Salesforce automation interview strategies and topics that can really change the game when you sit for your next Salesforce interview. So let's get started with the first topic that states that you should understand what those tools are and what is their real world use. So when you're going to sit for an interview, at least you should know what are the different types of the tools that are applicable in Salesforce. And you should also understand what is their real world use. So the different types of the tools are approval process, flows, entitlement rules, validation rules, case assignment rules, lead assignment rules. And even though process builders and workflow rules are completely deprecated, but still you should at least know about it and triggers as well. So the thing is you should at least understand and should be able to define this approval process or flows and all the automation tools. And also you should be able to understand what is the real values because sometimes they don't won't ask you what's an approval process. Sometimes they will give you a scenario saying, stating that, okay, this is the user and this is a manager and this is a user and he, he wants to apply for a leave and then up, that leave should get up, get uh, up, must be approved by its manager or somewhat like that. And in that scenario, you have to use approval process. You cannot use flows or entitlement rules, but instead you have to use approval process. They can also give you a scenario that we have to apply an SLA. For an example, if some product is been expired after, like there is an expiry date for each product from the time it is delivered. After that, we will only give support for only five days and after that we won't entertain that person in that case is entertainment rules comes into the picture so you should be able to define what these automation tools are and you should also understand their real world use if you don't understand their real world use you cannot be able to answer this cross questions okay let's move on to a next topic which states that you should be able to understand how do they fit in order of execution so when you're studying about all these automation tools and when I have seen multiple interviews, like I have been through more than 500 plus interviews and I have understood one simple thing is that they try to squeeze everything in terms of order of execution. So if you know all these automation tools and you are not able to understand, okay, when, uh, which automation tools runs at what point or which automation tool will be missed if I use this following thing, you should be for that sp specific thing. You should be able to understand this order of execution. Let me give you an example. Okay. Let's say you have an approval process, which is making the record status to approved. Okay. Then basically an approval process is going to change the status to approved. If the status, like if the record is approved and you also have a validation rule that states that the record cannot be approved. Okay. So it's a contradictory situation. Validation rule states that you cannot change it to approve, but approval process will go and up update it. So in this scenario, what will happen? Will the validation rule fire or approval process will update the data? An answer is most probably approval process will update the data because validation rule fires first as compared to that of the approval process. So validation rule is going to miss that approval process and the record will get updated. So for this specific type of the questions, you should understand order of execution because many of the times if I sit on a call with a person, he usually tells, tells me that, can you please give me some questions that are asked in an interview? Honestly, even I don't know what they will ask, but if you understand the topics very well, then you can easily answer this question. And this is one of the point, right? You should be able to understand how the order of execution works in terms of this products or in terms of this automation tools. There is one more very famous question. Let's say there's a field that's getting updated by a flow that's getting updated by, uh, let's say record, uh, let's say trigger that's getting updated by some process builder and workflow rule. What will be the value of the field? Again, you should be able to understand what is the order of execution. If you don't understand the order of execution, you won't be able to answer this question. So main, main important thing is you should be able to understand how the order of execution works in this automation tools, which include triggers and all these things. Let's move on to our third point, which says that how does these tools interact with each other? Now, many times, okay, I've seen people don't know how these tools interact with each other. You should be able to explain that. Okay. Because let's say if you, they might ask you after the entitlement process has been executed, I want to fire a flow. You can fire a flow to be very honest. You can fire a flow, but from milestone, you can fire uh, from milestone. We can fire a flow, not entitlement process, but entitlement process and milestone are one and the same component itself. So you can fire a flow, but what kind of a flow you can only fire an auto launch flow. Similarly, how can we fire a flow from flow? So it's not possible that you can fire a screen flow from a screen flow. That's not possible. You have to use auto launch flow. And then from that flow, you can fire from a screen flow, you can fire an auto launch flow. So auto launch flow will be acting as a child and something like that. Okay. Fourth is how to fire a flow from a trigger. So you should be able to understand how these components work with each other. Also one more thing, how do you pass the data from flow to apex class for, so you have to use invocable apex. Okay. What types of the parameters are applicable? So you should be basically able to understand how these topics or how this, how these products, how these automation tools interact with each other. Okay. How do you pass the data from one tool to another tool and vice versa? So you should be also able to answer that. 
so that's the another topic in which which you can consider as a parameter to get ready for the interview okay let's move on to our next point which says that what are the best practices of these tools no matter in whatever interview sit best practices are always asked in even if it is in terms of flows even if it is in terms of approval process even if it is in terms of uh, lwc component or even in terms of apex so, so few of the things that are asked is if flow gets too complex then add it that to the subflow so when, this is one of the best practices many of the people sit for uh, sit with an interview like sit for an interview with me and they ask me like whenever i ask them what are the best practices of a flow they are not able to answer it and one of this is this for an example if flow is very complex it's very too large and in that case is you can do is you can divide that overall flow into the smaller smaller subflows to make it lesser and lesser complicated so this is one of the best practices second best practice is that instead of using loops go ahead and use transform okay loops has some limitations of course every loop has an limitation if possible uh, you should be able to reduce these loops so one of the answer for this is transform and vice versa so you should whatever the tools that you are learning you should be able to understand what are the best practices of these tools okay if you are going to approval process you should know what that approval process is where it is used what are the best practices of it and vice versa whatever points we have gone through it uh, where does it fits into the order of execution and everything like that okay so you have to also cover the best practices of these tools let's move on to a last point that states that you also need to cover the limitations of these tools okay limitations in terms of the tools level limitation and in terms of governor limits as well okay so tool level limitation is nothing but for an example i can only have 50 versions of the flow, flow, flows right so this is a tool level limitation uh, also one more uh, limitation is we cannot use async flows if we have uh, if you have each change in our integrator so in a flow we have an entry criteria and if you are using uh, is changed you cannot you, you cannot create an async path over there okay so in that scenarios again this is a tool level limitation but let's say you can do only 150 dms this is a governor level limitation so you have to combine all these limitations together and learn about all these topics or all about all this uh, what we call automation tools so whenever you learn about a specific topic go in this following way what's an approval process where it is used how does it fits in the order of execution let's consider an example of approval process okay like uh, what's an approval process where it is used in the real world example okay how does this fits in the order of execution the approval process okay how does the approval process interacts with other automation tools like entire process or flows or other auto automation tools and what are the best practices of these tools and finally what are the limitations of these tools so if you learn through this way most probably you will cover everything about those automation tools so this was I had to cover in this specific video. If you found this video helpful, I request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel.